Okay, first things first. Sorry, this might be a little later than usual. Um, basically, everything in the world just kind of got in my way. Like, I had watched uh, the final episode of She-Hulk this afternoon. Actually, early, late this morning. And I had intended to record in the afternoon, and then I forgot something, so I had to double back. And, uh, you know, then because of that, I got interrupted by something else, and then something else. And, and you know, now it's 10.22. So, uh, sorry. Uh... Anyway, again, I'm going to basically just give my thoughts on the episode overall and the series overall, and then we're going to just jump into a giant spoiler section, and then we'll wrap things up. All right? Okay, so obviously um, the finale to She-Hulk gets an A. I think it does things right. I think it, you know, it maintained the comedy balance throughout everything. It did set up some interesting ideas. It also followed through on some interesting ideas. And it does have a very nice, somewhat meta commentary on the Marvel Universe, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, to be more precise. Uh, and some other funnier aspects to it. Uh, I would say if there is one drawback, it might have been just a tiny bit rushed. Like, maybe they could have just added, you know, 15 more minutes. I think it could have worked a little bit better. And But still, I mean, everything worked. I think a lot of the characterization still made sense. And overall, like I said, it was still very fun. Uh, the series overall obviously also gets an A. There's just nothing wrong with this. And again, I understand that if you're tuning in for something with a lot of superhero action, you're going to be upset. But if you know She-Hulk and if you know the She-Hulk comics, this is what you would have wanted because this is those comics, really. You know, this is the John Byrne run. This is the Dan Slott stuff. This is, you know, even the Charles Soleil stuff. You know, this is the fun, you know... It's fun. It's got, like I said, it's got commentary in it. You know, it comes from a relatable standpoint. You know, everything, were, you know, the characterization from the comics is still spot on here. And again, uh, so, yeah, this thing also gets an A overall. Like, I've been giving every episode an A because they've been that good. So, yes, uh, She-Hulk overall gets an A. The final episode gets an A. A, 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 A. A peaceful day in the honeycomb hideout is suddenly interrupted by... The Hulk! A big Hulk on big cereal! Honeycomb, you better come through! Brace yourself, Hulk! Honeycomb's big! It's got a big bite that tastes right! Big enough for a Hulk? Just try it! Who's honeycomb cereal big? And part of balanced breakfast! Hulk, go! Don't forget your honeycomb! Honeycomb big! And he's got a big bite! Okay, so we're going to try to get through every episode that we can here because we got about four of them to cover. So, first off, episode six is titled, um, what is it? It's Just Jen. Um, in fact, they even do Just Then in the title credits. Basically, uh, her old, co uh, G Jen's old college friend is getting, or his high school friend is getting married. She's been invited to be a bridesmaid. She gets to show up as She-Hulk. And the bride takes her and says, like, look, we don't want a lot of distractions. Could you just be Jen? And it's like the one, it's like the one time I didn't want to just be Jen because this friend was like the, the ultra popular, you know, cheerleader type who everyone loved. And it's just like, you know, it's like, I wanted to show up and, you know, get attention too. <laughs> yeah. But no, she, you know, gets her, you know, she goes through everything, but then suddenly Titania shows up as a, uh, I believe a date of a cousin or something and so she's in the wedding party and you know she sees Jen kind of flop around a little bit and fail uh you know, she gets Jen gets completely drunk because she's human so she can't handle her liquor as well and starts throwing up and that's when Titania decides to attack however Jen is just too drunk to transform eventually Jen does transform they have another kind of brawl in the middle of it and this time though the bride's actually excited possibly because she's also drunk um, and as this is happening, uh, back at Jen's office, Nikki is looking things up, and she starts seeing a lot of anti-She-Hulk things popping up, and tracks it back to a website called The Intelligentsia. Uh, that is a group in the comics, but it's basically more like a think tank of several very intelligent supervillains, like Doctor Doom, MODOK, and, uh, I think one of the heads of, uh, AIM, I can't remember which one. But yeah, that's a different thing altogether. Uh, on the plus side, at the wedding, Jen does meet someone who is actually interested in, you know, coincidentally, just Jen named Josh. 
And this dovetails into the seventh episode, which is, I, I okay, don't worry, uh, the retreat. Um, and she goes on and Josh with a few dates. Eventually, they seem to hook up, and he ghosts her. And she gets upset, and she just keeps trying to like talk to him. As this is happening, she gets a call from Emil Blonsky's parole officer because Blonsky's inhibitor seems to have, you know, either malfunctioned or shut off. And it turns out. You know, they go out there, and Blonsky's still normal, he's running this peace retreat, and there's a lot of flunky hill villains slash heroes out there. There's uh, a vampire, or someone claiming to be a vampire named Saracen. Uh, there's Manbol, uh, who is a character I believe in the Daredevil uh, comics. Uh, there's El Aguila, who is a matador type. And in a rather surprising move, the Wrecker is all there, too, is, you know... Basically, you know, they're all together trying to, you know, peacefully exist and not get into trouble. And it turns out that the abomination, or Blonsky wasn't paying attention. He was uh, dealing with a chicken and inadvertently backed into an electric fence and then shorted out his inhibitor. But he did not transform, so, you know, he kept his calm long enough to, you know, keep everything cool. And then from there, you know, Jen kind of get, you know, unfortunately as this happens... Uh, El Aguila and uh, Mambul get into a fight, and Jen's car gets smashed, and it's going to take a while for a tow truck to get out there, so they offer to let her stay. And she sits down on a group therapy session, which she sort of eventually joins in, because she talks about uh, this guy who goes to her, and she finally kind of has an emotional breakthrough, because why it upset her? Well, it's obvious, because he wanted to just be with Jen. He didn't care about She-Hulk, where every other guy just wanted to be with She-Hulk. So, you know, it was kind of nice, and, you know, just to turn out that, oh, he used her too. And, yeah, so they convince her to, they convince him, or her to disconnect his, or erase his phone from her uh, contact list. But then we get the uh, big twist, which is that uh, it turns out Josh was working for the Intelligentsia, and uh, he got, when they slept together, he got a bit of her blood. And he also hacked her phone so they can track all her messages and all her personal stuff. And that leads us into the eighth episode, which is Ribbit and Rip It. Uh, this concerns a wannabe superhero called Leapfrog, whose costume malfunctions. Uh, Leapfrog is actually a character I've covered on the Random Trade Review very briefly in the... Uh, Daredevil storyline, Wake Up, that was, I believe, the second Leapfrog. Uh, I don't know if this is that character from the comics necessarily. In this case, it's he's a spoiled rich kid whose father is a client of Jen's firm, so uh, when this malfunctions, she, he wants to sue the maker, who is Luke Jacobson, the guy who's been making uh, She-Hulk's big outfits and everything, and when this happens, uh, Luke said, <laughs> as well, if you're going to represent him, you're not getting it. I'm not making it any more closer to you, which means this awards gala that you've been invited to, you're not going to get this dress for it. And, you know, she's sort of, but, you know, she's kind of in this place where it's like the firm is telling her you have to represent him, the client's too big, and, you know, because you're a superhero and you're the superhero, in a superhero law, you have to, you know, cover this. And as this happens, the court date is happening, the lawyer who shows up for Luke is none other than Matt Murdock, which means we finally get our Daredevil cameo. However, within, and of course within seconds, uh, Matt is able to discern that Leapfrog went against Luke's orders and put jet fu fuel in the outfit, which is why it caught on fire. Uh, he's, the Leapfrog had rocket boots in it so he could leap away quickly. And he put jet fuel in it, and it's like, well, I wanted to really blast off. And it's like, and he goes, yeah, but you were explicitly told not to put jet fuel in it. It's a special kind of fuel that only worked in the house, so. Yeah, uh, and then, as this happens, you know, afterwards, Jen is at a bar. Matt's there, they kind of hit things off. However, he then gets a phone call to leave, and it turns out that uh, Leapfrog has kidnapped Luke and is forcing him to make a new outfit. Uh, but, you know, Jen is not aware of this, so she comes briefly to Leapfrog's defense, but then when she realizes that Matt is Daredevil, uh, they work together to take down Leapfrog. 
and afterwards uh, Matt and Jen hook up <laughs> um, and you know we get a, a very humorous scene the next day of Matt uh, taking the walk of shame home in the Daredevil outfit because he didn't have any other clothes um, and uh, but that's not quite the end of the episode because again we have this awards gala coming up and because Jen rescued Luke, he puts her back on the nice list, and so he finishes making her dress as quickly as he can. And even then, it's like, Jen's kind of weird. It's like, you know, should the gala, I mean, me being up for this award, because she, she's up for an award, which I'll get to the humorous part there, and she, you know, she turns to the camera and it's like, huh, wait, next week's the finale. Shouldn't the gala be at the finale? Why are we doing this here? Oh, no, there's going to be some big twist that happens. Eh, maybe not. Um, you know, she goes to the end. The, the funny thing is she's supposed to be up for uh, Female Lawyer of the Year or something to that effect. And it turns out it's just an award for all the female lawyers to be given at once, so it's nothing that special. But as she's up there, uh, suddenly uh, the intelligentsia strikes again and posts a tape of Jen and Josh having sex. Uh, they show all of her personal stuff. And she sees it, and she just snaps, and she really hulks out this time, and she causes a lot of damage. And it comes down to the authorities to, you know, take her down a little bit. And that leads us into our final episode of the season. Uh, not the retreat, it's... I'm sorry. <clears throat> Whose show is this? Uh, uh, Jen is in prison. Nikki and... Guy Lawyer, whose name I just never remembered, uh, basically works to get a deal cut with her. She has to wear an inhibitor at all times. She can't hulk out anymore. You know, she also, uh, I don't know if she can't, if she's disbarred, but she loses her job. You know, she loses her apartment. She has to move back in with her parents. And so... And eventually she decides, well, I'll go to Blonsky's retreat and see if I can, you know, clear my head again, because that seemed to work so well the last time. And, you know, it turns out Blonsky is out of town for something, or he has a speaking gig. And it just so happens that as this is happening, uh, the guy lawyer and Nikki are working on trying to figure out who exactly the intelligentsia are so that uh, Jen can properly sue them. And... They're out investigating, and they finally manage to track. And basically, Nikki set, sets up a sets up a fake account, and you know they have to send the mail lawyer in because it's all these guys. Because it turns, yeah, they're all internet trolls and people like that. I won't name names. Uh, who are all like, you know, look, I got a problem with girl Thor too. I mean, it's not because she's a woman. I would have the same problems if she was a guy. Okay, but, you know, they're female. They, have, they keep saying female, female all the time. It's just like, you know, she Hulk, you know, didn't get her powers naturally. She got them from the Hulk. And she stole them. Like, she didn't steal them. It was an accident. But, uh, anyway, and as this happens, it turns out that the actual head of the intelligentsia is none other than, uh, Todd Phelps, who is one of the guys Jen dated on her online dating profile, who was this creepy superhero fetishist. Um, and apparently, I guess he just long had a hatred for She-Hulk because that was just an act. Uh, and it turns out that Blonsky is one of the speakers at this, and Jen finds out because it's being held on the Blonsky's grounds. And, and it's like, what in the world is going on here? And then Titania shows up, and then Bruce shows up, and then she finds, like, wait, no, 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 no. And she literally just, she literally goes, like, just completely out of the set and everything. She goes backstage, goes to the writer's room, and is like, what the hell is going on here? Like, because, like, the other plot is, again, they stole Jen's blood so they could derive a Hulk serum. Todd turns himself into a, you know, Todd Hulk, for lack of a better term. And it's like, this is the plot of almost every MCU movie. You try to do, like, a super soldier serum, or create a new Hulk, or... <laughs> create a new Iron Man, or create... <laughs> yeah, everyone has daddy issues, everyone's at this, everyone's at this. You know, why can't you come up with something original? It's like, well, you have to take that up with Kevin. Kevin Feige, the overall head of the... Um, the overall producer for the MCU. 
And so she goes to, you know, Kevin, who it turns out is like a, uh, what's the robot from Portal's name? GLaDOS? <laughs> so it's like that. And it's like, you know, well, you know, we need to set you up for the movies. And, you know, we have all these big plots that we need to set things up for. And it's like, look, this is a legal sitcom. Can't we just do it in a funny but legal way? Let, let me just be a lawyer. <laughs> and finally he's like, okay, yeah. And finally, like, Kevin relents. I can't remember what the leverage point was exactly, but Kevin relents. And so, you know, Todd doesn't turn into a Hulk. And it suddenly becomes daylight where once this was taking place at night. Bruce isn't there. Um, Titania is still there for some reason, though. Uh, Abomination is reverted back to a human. And, you know, it just said, I wasn't thinking. And, you know, I'm sorry. And he turns himself in because he is trying to do things the right way. Uh, but eventually he winds up getting taken by Wong again uh, during the mid credit sequence. And, uh, yeah, so everything gets kind of wrapped up. You know, Jen is able to sue all the trolls because she now knows everything about them. And, you know, she gets her job back. She's allowed to be She-Hulk again. Uh, Daredevil shows up, a little too late to join the fight. But, uh, you know, she treats him to dinner with her family. And it's then that Bruce suddenly returns because he's been off on the planet Sakaar and he's got someone they want them to, he wants them to meet, his son Scar. So uh, that's a reference to the Planet Hulk storyline. Uh, so yeah, we're the next big uh, Hulk project is World War Hulks. Uh, and I guess apparently Harrison Ford is being brought in to be the new uh, Thunderbolt Ross who becomes a Hulk on his own, the Red Hulk. And, like I said, uh, you know, these were all just really fun. I actually think, you know, the Daredevil one, when it finally happened, like, you know, <laughs> for two weeks, we were like, you know, they keep saying Daredevil's going to show up, and he hasn't. And then when he finally does, they, they manage to hit it just out of the park. It's so like everything works so well. All the performances are great. Everything is funny. You know, again, a lot of the stuff is really nitpicky stuff. Like, again, the idea of... You know, Jen can't get a date. You know, she's not, you know, She-Hulk is super hot, but Jen, no one cares about him. It's like, you're saying Tatiana Maslany isn't sexy? Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's just kind of the, yeah, you know, maybe not the greatest, but still fun, you know, really enjoyable. Again, like I say, everything, anything that's negative is just nitpicky. That's why, you know, this series obviously gets an A. Uh, so, yeah. He's big. He's mean. He's The Incredible Hulk. For your Sega Genesis, Game Gear, or Super NES system. Okay, again, the next video is going to be Halloween Ends, the recap and review for that. Uh, no, I didn't get to, I haven't seen it yet. I know it's out on Peacock now as I'm recording this, but I won't be seeing it until tomorrow. Or, well, you'll be seeing this on Friday, but yeah, I'm recording it on Thursday, and it's reportedly already out on Peacock, so if you wanted to watch it now, you could. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, after that, you know, another Madden preview thing. Um, the next movie then after that is Black Adam and then the random trade review on uh, Leonard McCoy, Frontier Doctor. See you all next time. Hey guys, remember you can request a movie or a television series for me to review at my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions. Also, remember to like the video, comment, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you can be alerted to further videos.